And right now on our Health Watch, where we discuss all the topics trending in the medical world, we're sending things over to Fox 61's Tim Lammers. He is in Studio 61 with more details. Tim. Erica, thank you. Yes, as always, joined by Dr. Saeed Hussein from Trinity Health of New England to talk about what is trending in the world of health. And this morning, I want to start with a recent report from the CDC. One second. Good morning. Hi. Morning. I always forget <laughs> to do that with you. Uh, there is a recent report from the CDC, and i got to be very uh, careful with how I word this. Overall, COVID hospitalizations are a small fraction of what they used to be. But of the people currently being hospitalized with COVID, a greater percentage of them are 65 and older compared to about two years ago. I think it's about 63%, whereas it used to be about 45%. And a lot of those people, as it turns out, did not get the latest booster when it first came around, doctor. Uh, what do we know about uh, th this group, why that percentage is going up? Because a lot of people are not getting their boosters. Is it just because they're more at risk anyway? Yeah, thank you, Tim, for the question. It's a good question, timely, since we just have the new vaccine that is being rolled out. This is data from the CDC that was just released from January of this year to August, which shows out of all the hospitalizations, like you mentioned, yeah. two thirds are 65 and above. And when you start uh, peeling the onion and looking at the data more closely, those that are 85 and above are more at risk for getting hospitalized. What is common though in this 65 and above age group in the two thirds who did get hospitalized, only yeah. a little over 50% of them actually got the original coronavirus vaccine when it first rolled out in end of uh, 2020, early 2021. Yeah. And only 24% got the bivalent uh, booster that was rolled out in September of last year, which all points to the efficacy, remember, of these vaccines in preventing severe illness, hospitalization, and death. Yeah. So the take-home message here is the new vaccine, new reformulated vaccine, is now in your doctor's office. It's in pharmacies nationwide now is the time to get it to prevent a surge during the winter. Right. Don't let your guard down. As you said, a lot of these people might not have been vaccinated in the first place. Probably thought if they made it this far, That's they're right. okay. One more sure. point, Tim, to add yeah. is that those with underlying medical conditions are even higher risk, mm -hmm. uh, uh, coupled with uh, age above uh, 65. So things to keep in mind. Yes. And those are trends that have been there since the start of the Correct. pandemic. That is nothing new. All right. Uh, moving on, a U.S. gymnastics legend, Mary Lou Retton, a reporter according to her own daughter, is fighting for her life in an intensive care unit in Texas. All we know from the family is that she has a rare form of pneumonia. I was not aware that there were that many forms of pneumonia, but uh, uh, what kinds are there? And, and more importantly, because we can't speak to Mary Lou's specific case here, what are some of the signs of severe pneumonia that you need to be on the lookout yeah, for? Yeah, great question. Pneumonia is an infection of the lungs, which can cause fluid to basically fill in the air sacs yeah. of the lungs. It can cause symptoms such as fever, cough, especially productive cough, uh, shortness of breath, chest pain. When you start having persistent cough or shortness of breath or persistent fevers, those are all red flags when you should start seeking medical attention and help. We don't know what this, um, uh, what the underlying conditions were here. Yeah. Uh, we know that she's above the age of 65, which in itself is a risk factor for more severe uh, forms of pneumonia. Pneumonia can be caused by bacteria, viruses, mm -hmm. um, a whole bunch of things. There is treatment available, but it can also lead to complications such as here. Again, we don't know what the exact circumstances are, Tim, yeah. but um, complications include, you know, being on a ventilator because you can't breathe. Um, and multi-organ failure. Yeah, we certainly uh, wish Mary Lou the best. All right, now, a, a lot of people taking some popular injected weight loss medications like Ozempic appear to be at a higher risk for a lot of different stomach problems, including stomach paralysis. Another thing that I've never heard of, what is that? Just how much of a risk is there here? Yeah, this is uh, coupled with the, uh, the uh, up We've seen in Ozempic, Vigovia, all these weight loss uh, drugs that have hit the market. Millions now worldwide are on these drugs. Yeah. Um, there, this was a large observational study, uh, Tim. And 1% out of all the study participants, folks that were reviewed, developed these complications of either bowel obstruction, pancreatitis, or stomach paralysis, which can lead to nausea and vomiting, among other symptoms. Yeah. So 1% is relatively small, but when you take that uh, millions that are on this drug, it can lead to hundreds of thousands of people that can experience these 
uh, side effects. So basic take home message here is if you are on this medication, make sure you have frequent conversations with your healthcare provider. And if you do develop nausea, vomiting, or other GI symptoms, make sure you seek medical attention ASAP. And that is a similar math lesson, what you were just telling me, as the beginning of the uh, the COVID pandemic, when a lot of people were saying, at the time, it looked like only 1% of people who got COVID died. Oh, that doesn't sound like much. But when everybody's getting it, hundreds of millions right. of people, that 1% becomes a huge, huge number. And it looks like the same thing is happening here. Doctor, thank you so much for thank the you. time. Dr. Syed Hussein from Trinity Health of New England. See, I always remember to thank him, Erica, after we're done. But I'm so eager to get into the topics a lot of the time I forget to say good morning and welcome him when we first see him I know I know good stuff all right thanks so much